everybody, this is Perch, and uh, here's a question I have, and I think this is one we can all debate about, because I think there's going to be a lot of different opinions. The fun thing is, there's not a single opinion that is correct. I mean, time will prove what is correct, but I mean, there's no, there's no brilliant way to forecast this now, but let's talk through it. So the question is, hey Perch, what genre do you think is going to become most popular over the next 10 years? Do you think it will be horror? Do you think it will be action? You think superheroes will make a comeback? Kind of weird to think about superheroes making a comeback when I think we're in the middle of the superhero boom right now. But but anyway, for comics, for comics, I, I get I get what you're saying. There. Do you think it will be slice of life? Do you think it will be the Shutter BL genre? <laughs> it's not, not Shutter. Come on, it's it's there's some people who who definitely appreciate BL. Um, you know, if if you don't know what BL is, you can go check it out. But it is a it is a genre. Uh, certainly very popular with manga right now. I do think there is going to be growth uh, in the U.S., no pun intended, over that genre, but no, not the hottest. Anyway, what do you, sorry, back to the mail. What do you think is the hottest genre in comics over the next 10 years? What would smart comic publishers be doing right now if they wanted to take on advantage of that? Okay, it's a great question. I think it's a, it's a, and it's a fun thing to speculate. Already there are people listening, ready to write into the comments what they think the most popular, uh, popular genre is. So by process of elimination, I'll kind of go through what I think it isn't. So a lot of people are going to say horror, and I would argue that it won't be horror because I think we've kind of lived through a lot of horror in comics. We've been kind of dealing with it. It's hard to imagine that horror is going to suddenly pop and be bigger than it is today. I think, if anything, it's kind of run its course to some extent. I mean, people are still making money off horror, and they, they conti- it will continue. I think horror in storytelling, if you look at books, for example, it's had various uh, bumps. But I, I don't believe it's the next big thing. Um, I also don't believe Westerns are going to be the next big thing. I don't think that's true. And I also think we've gone through kind of gritty crime noir. Uh, you know, Brubaker's done a great job uh, kind of maximizing that field. I don't think that's going to be it either. I think the next big genre for comics, and now this is just my own personal crazy guess, is I think it's going to be superheroes but younger. I think it's going to be the classic kind of My Hero Academia style uh, superhero kind of book. I think that is, and here's why. Here would be my argument for why I think this is. We're seeing a lot of people who have come into graphic novels at a very early age via Dogman, via Babysitter Club, uh, books like that. That's become a very popular um, new category, and people are making a lot of money in that category. But the, if you think about the audience who's been buying all this stuff, and you look at the numbers of Dogman, and you look at the numbers of of people who have bought into those books, they're, uh, it's, it's huge. It's a massive market. In many ways, it's a much bigger market than the feeder audience for Marvel back in the day. The amount of Dogman and, and books like that that are being sold did really, really well. And we, we you can draw a direct correlation, a direct line between people who got into things like Dogman and uh, Captain Underpants and stuff like that early, who then started going into manga. I certainly see it with my kids. My kids went uh, almost a, you know, my daughter loved Captain Underpants, loved Dogman, and, uh, you know, picked up things like One Piece and My Hero Academia like it was the logical next step. They got very excited about that. And that was what happened with their friends, too. Uh, This is on my mind, this question a little bit, because we're doing the the Scholastic Book Fair is going on right now at my kid's school. And they bring home the little, you know, the little pamphlet, whatever, of the books. And if you look at it, you see a ton of, uh, you know, kind of early age superhero stuff in there. Um, for the first time, and, and I know it's been in there before, a decent amount of manga is in there. Way more than Marvel and DC are, are showing up in this, this format that Scholastic is going to carry through their book fair. Um, and, you know, unsurprisingly, schools are not going to, you know, really promote hardcore horror. So they're going to, you know, My Hero Academia is, and, and One Piece were getting a lot of attention. I can't wait, by the way. Here's what's going to happen with One Piece. Just mark my words. I, this Netflix show is such a terrible idea on all fronts. Because the live action version, I, One Piece is not going to translate well to live action, period. It's just, it's not going to work terribly well.
Um, but when it comes out, it's going to draw a bunch of new attention onto One Piece, and people are going to go check out the manga. Uh, because, uh, you know, Netflix, the way they are promoting a lot of films, uh, the, way, the way they're promoting all kinds of material, is definitely for, I would say, an American-centric audience. And in many cases, a very Twitter audience. In the, the announcements for One Piece, they put the pronouns for all the actors in the announcement. Did the same thing for Sandman. Um, it's definitely something that is Twitter-pleasing when they do that. However, what we're going to see is that people who, you know, appreciate that or enjoy it are going to go look at the manga and they're going to be like, what, what's up with Nami's boobs? That's immediate. Like this is sexist trash. It's going to generate this. We need to cancel Oda. It's going to bring this whole wave, which in fairness, he's hit before and just kind of ignored it because he's smart that way, but it's going to bring this whole new attention to problematic manga. And uh, already I'm seeing articles being written about uh, why we have to, you know, like the, uh, w what is a classic awesome scene, by the way, in One Piece, where the uh, Straw Hat Pirates, uh, you know, their Nami basically betrayed them, and they're on Fishman Island. I, spoilers, uh, but this is early in the series, spoilers. And, uh, you know, Nami is, is basically revealed to, you know, that she was conning them to some extent, but then they realized what had happened to her as a result of Arlong and the Fishman Pirates, and they, you know, Luffy gives her, her his hat and goes out to kick their ass. And it's a great, like, this is a, you get chills watching this scene. The music sets up, and they're like, all right, even Usopp, who's kind of a coward, is like, I'm going to go, and we're going to fight this Fishman army. And it's, it's, a, it's a great moment. It's a moment of friendship. It's a moment of bonding. It's where a lot of people who are watching the show, that's the moment that they're hooked, is, is that scene. And I'm seeing already articles coming out talking about how that scene needs to be erased in the live-action series because it's problematic, because it portrays Nami as a victim that needs men to come and save her, which is not what that scene is about at all. You're talking about a girl who was traumatized and is very capable. Nami on a regular basis, electrocutes her own crew. So she's, that, that Nami is, is very capable of, hold, of holding her own. That's not what that scene is, but already I saw what CBR and I think Screen Rant have, have started the articles on, here's the scene they really need to erase when they, when they do the live action show on Netflix, because it's very problematic. It, it, it's very you know, denigrating to women, and it's like, it, it's not at all. You've completely missed it. But anyway, I'm, I'm off track. Uh, but I, I, I like One Piece a great deal, and I think this show is going to bring nothing but trouble to the entire series and, and everything around it. Anyway, deep breath. So I, I again, to kind of go back to the original premise. Um, what do I think is going to be popular? I think that's going to be popular because I think you've got this big target market now that grew up as is acclimated to graphic novels, likes them, enjoys them, appreciates them, and they are they're ready to. You know, they're ready to experience more of that kind of storytelling. They're, they're ready to experience graphic novels. And so as they're older, things like Dogman and, uh, you know, and, and those comics, you know, it's, they, they're looking for the next logical step up. And as much as the, you know, U.S. comic industry has been stupid and not reading the tea leaves as well as, say, manga has with getting into other genres... Um, they're, they're eventually going to figure out that things like My Hero Academia is kicking their ass. And so you're going to see more comics. The trade sales for Strange Academy do very well. Um, now, interestingly enough, Teen Titans Academy did fairly horribly and was canceled. And, uh, you know, but, but if you read that comic, it doesn't remotely read like what that genre is. Young superheroes kind of figuring themselves out and everything else. I would be completely unsurprised if DC or Marvel, one of the two, uh, launched a new kind of Ultimate Universe style thing for new readers to come in and kind of get experience with these heroes for the first time. I mean, it would make tons of sense. You'd have to be a complete idiot not to want to go down that route, given what you're seeing in the market. But that's the genre I think that, that really is going to take off and, and go someplace. But here's the thing. Um, we, you know, I guarantee you all of you listening right now have different opinions on what you think is going to be hot over the next few years. The common denominator here and what should happen is that uh, U.S. comic publishers should get off their ass and they should start, you know, they should start trying 
aggressively other genres. They should try a true slice of life book, not a superhero book with slice of life elements in it. They should try horror. They, they should get eight or nine of comics from very different genres, including, by the way, one that you know hard serves the LGBTQ BL type market. Do, do a comic that is unashamedly that from the beginning. Again, not some kind of stealth comic where it's going to say, I'm a superhero book, but I'm going to also do, I'm going to, you know, make, you know, make it gay, do crime, whatever it happens to be. Like, don't, don't stealth do it. Do it full on. I'm encouraging, I'm encouraging you to come out with a complete, you know, it is what it says it is book for the LGBTQ audience. Absolutely do one. Absolutely do one. Do one for all these different markets promote them really aggressively in the channels where they should be promoted and see what works. I, I've done these videos before. It is dumb for the comic industry, for the big publishers to be largely sleeping on these genres and, and what needs to be done there. They kind of dip their toe in a little water, you know, here or there. And they, they, they but, but none of them are going full bore for it. And if they don't, and, and they're not, here's what's going to happen. Scholastic is exploring the young adult superhero genre. They're going to wind out, uh, wind up just commissioning their own stuff or, or partnering with like a webtoon to print some of this in a format that makes sense. And they're just going to keep all those customers who are rolling off of Dogman and looking for something fun. They found manga, but they, they, there's more they want to read. Um, th you know, that, that's just going to go to that. That's just going to go to a Scholastic and they're going to miss out on it. So, but I'm curious what you all think. I'm curious what you believe the next big genre of comics is going to be. Who's going to own it? Who's going to run it? Where do you think it goes? Let me know in the comments below, where would you be investing your money? What genre do you think is hot? Uh, where do you think the next frontier of comics sits? I'm interested to hear what you have in mind. But anyway, let me know. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.